This is my 95 F250. I bought it with this wooden bed on it. I've been using it. It sort of works okay, but it's falling apart. You can't really tie anything down to it. So I need to yank it off so that I can start to devise a plan for the rest of it. Let me start tearing this down. Welcome back to the shop. This is a trailer that a buddy of mine has had for a very long time. And I believe that I used this trailer when I was 16 years old to move. My parents have a Model T Ford, a 1925 Model T. Used to not have any sides on it. It was just a flat, unsprung, no suspension trailer. And I had towed the Model T around on it. It was really scary, I remember that. But my buddy's had it for a long time and hasn't been using it for nine years it sat parked and I had to cut a tree out of the middle of it that had grown through it but now it's gonna live on as the bed to my F-250 metal prices are astronomical right now and this trailer is not really doing anybody any good we've all sort of grown up and own a bunch of trailers so nobody is really without anymore so we're gonna try to repurpose this and turn it into an F-250 bed the first thing I have to do is unload all this moss off of it so I've got the two by sixes stripped off of this the dimensions are a little narrower than the f-250 currently is but I think that's okay it's only about four inches off the length is 98 inches which puts me I mean, it really doesn't matter. But I'm trying to decide on whether to use the front of the trailer or the back half of the trailer. The back half has more rust and would require a little bit more work. But this is a, a good starting point, so now I can maybe start to de-rust the middle part of it that I know I'll use and start to disassemble this and lock it up on the frame. I had hit a little bit of a snag on day one with this because the consumables I'd run out of, I'd lost the tips for this thing so I had to order some more and it took two days but this is what the insert for the plasma cutter should look like and here's the old one first the new one so I've got some new consumables now I've marked off the you see the F-150 back there the distance between the rear bumper and the cab that I want is 98 inches I'm going to keep the back half of this trailer, so I've measured 98 eight inches up there, and I'm going to go ahead and get the plasma cutter and cut this off to length. Well, that didn't go as planned. Screw that all up. Uh, it is a new day. I'm going to try not to drop any trailers on any vehicles today. All I'm going to be doing is wire wheeling and painting, I think. That would probably be the bulk of this video, so I'll probably skip past most of this. Now where they welded two pieces together, there's a, a lot of rust jacking going on. And there's no way to really stop that without access to it. So I'm going to cut that piece off and we'll be able to get down in there and get all that rust out. The 
plasma cutter works pretty good cutting off and the welds and blowing out the old rust, the old bolts that were here. So now we can get to that rust and get that torn off and painted. Well, the forklift made that real nice and easy. So I've got that set up here, and I just threw a 4x6 underneath there to make sure I didn't clip any lines, because I'm working by myself. So what I need to do is start to mock up the supports for this, and what, what I mean by supports, depending on how I edit this, I've got these brackets that are going to slide along and be welded into here, so I need to weld these up four of them at least four of them and then that'll help me position the bed but in addition to that i think i might use my lift i've got a, a hitch mounted hoist that'll plug in here that might help me swing this thing around here's a sky hook i don't use it very often but this is the kind of thing that you just love to have for a job like this so since i'm working by myself i can go ahead and shift the weight, do whatever I need to do. This will lift up to 500 pounds. If I didn't say it before, then I'll say it now. The steel prices are absolutely unbelievable right now. That's just unbelievable. So, luckily I would saved some steel from my grandfather's shop. Here is a roughly 10 foot long piece of uh, I-beam. And it's 8 inches tall. 5 and a half seems to work well for the height. But, all that is to say is it is, right now it's 8 inches to the top of this beam. So if I cut it on the inside, and set it on the frame, I can weld it, and it'll give me a really, really solid center support for this. So what I need to do now is mark 60 inches on this and cut that as straight as I can with the plasma cutter. So there's that piece of 8 inch cut on the inside. So I've got this entire piece of seat channel that I can weld right to the top of that. That should make a very nice connection through there, provided my weld's hold. And that'll allow me to steady everything up on the bed, and, and I'll still be able to put my supports that I had fabricated earlier. Um, some of them. <laughs> well, I'll just keep plugging away and bring you back as I make progress. That is the first piece of 8 inch C channel. I've just got a couple little 6013 tacks there. I've been known to do things <laughs> incorrectly, so I, I'm reluctant to go through and immortalize anything and put a bunch of welds on it. A couple little welds like that I can come plasma off real quick in case I made some catastrophic error. But I'm going to do the same on the back now. That back C channel is pretty rotted out, but we'll work with what we got. Um,
So I'm using the tailgate as the headache rack and the distance between the bottom of the bed and the top of the cab is about 36 inches. So I've got a piece of flat stock here. And the width is exactly the same between the tailgate and the bed. So I need to make up for that overlap by removing these side pieces. I need to cut 13 and 5 eighths off each one of these sides. And if my math is right, then this should plug right in between the two and I can weld it right to the to the back of the bed right there and that will make a nice headache rack. This is the spot I should wait for help, but if my math's right, I should be able to pull this off. We'll see what happens. All right, I got it in place and then this camera started beeping because it's got low battery so I'm going to weld this in because it's going to get dark soon and that's I'm pretty excited I didn't break the back window and I think it's going to look pretty good. So as I was grinding this I started realizing that the the amount of suspension travel isn't really adequate here. I'm going to use this piece of angle iron to cut out the section that's going to hit the wheel and use this to make up the frame on this side. That hopefully that will work. I've been struggling getting these getting this section cut out. You can see I've got it cut out on that side. What's happening, I think, is that the welds are extremely hard. They may have, I, I don't know, this is all conjecture. But I'm guessing that when it was welded and it was hot, maybe they hit it with a garden hose to cool it down. Because the welds are super hard and they're wiping out my sawzall blades. So I've got to stay away from the, the, the welds with the sawzall blades. And in the short sections like this, there's nothing but weld. So I'm coming over with the plasma cutter and zipping these off. And I'm not good enough with the plasma cutter to make a really straight cut yet. Or maybe I'll never be. But I'll cut this off with the sawzall so I get nice clean edges like I did over there. But to save me some sawzall blades, I'll plasma cut these off. Slow going pro progress with this thing. I've got the pieces cut out on this side. I need to, you know, effectively I want to carry the load. Just replace the load that was on this because I've cut it out now. I need to shift it over and break it down. see I've boxed in this piece of three inch channel iron and it's going to carry the load from this beam all the way down to this beam which is also boxed in and when I get some more wood I will sit up here and weld this in properly right now I don't like the idea of being stuck in an all-metal box with this stinger in my hand I know the welder can shock you. I'm not sure how bad it can shock you. I just don't want to be tra trapped in there with it. So, so I'll wait till I get some wood and, and not put myself in harm's way. I don't want to find out the hard way. But I've got a lot of rust removal to do and I need to scoot the bed back away from the cab so that I can begin to paint this. A lot of it's going to be super tedious. So I'll probably not spend a lot of time documenting it, but I'll bring you back when I make some progress. The width between the side of the bed, the, the entire bed, is 69 inches. So I've gone through and calculated out five and a half inches for my 2x6, 2x8, 2x10, and calculated out how many boards I'd need for each one. 
It turns out that a 2x12, if I had six 2x12s, it'll fit perfectly in there. Actually, I have 69 and maybe 3 eighths of an inch, so that'll give me a little bit of wiggle room. And I, I suppose that the boards will shrink over time because they're going to be pressure treated. So I don't think expansion will be too much of an issue. And on top of that, what I'm going to do is I have this bleacher seating. I wish I had more of this. I used to. But uh, this is 11 and a half inches wide also, so an inch and a half tall. 11 and a half inches wide, exact same dimensions as a 2x12. I'm going to put this right down the middle. This will provide like a lower friction coefficient, so if I'm sliding stuff in and out of the bed, uh, it'll be nice and it'll keep pallets from digging in or anything like that. I think it'll be a nice addition to it. But let me go down to Lowe's and spend a small fortune on some pressure treated 2x12s and come back. And you don't really, I, <laughs> I don't realize how much of a mess I make when I when I work on this stuff. I got wires and stuff going everywhere. All right, I just went to Lowe's. It was a uh, hundred and sixty-eight dollars for five two by twelves, twenty-six, twenty-seven dollars a piece for those things, and some some stain. I'm gonna paint the the trailer now, and then. Um, I got a little bit more welding. Paint this and then slide it, slide it back in place and then we'll dry fit the boards. I did not calculate <laughs> the even numbered of this and there being no middle in the even number. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have this aluminum offset, but I think it'll still be useful from time to time for sliding coolers and whatnot. So <clears throat> I need to go ahead and buzz this off in the back. And then I've got that piece of C-channel that I'll be able to use to entrap the boards in the back. It's a little bit short, but that's okay. I still need to finish the welding underneath it and I need to put some bolts to hold down the alignment, the alignment brackets, wire the tail lights, and put in some screws to hold the wood down. And I think that'll be it, but but man, this has been a lot of work. It really has. So it's not perfect. I still need to fabricate something for the gas and for the fill tubes but <clears throat> let me figure that stuff out and we'll keep plugging along I bought these half inch D-rings and I laid them down there with a little bit of 7018 and burned up all my 6013s so I uh, I really enjoy watching a channel called IC Weld. The guy is just phenomenal. He's just just a talented guy. Got a very uh, you know interesting channel. I'd go check it out if you get a chance. If you want to see somebody that really knows how to weld, but that's <laughs> that's probably the best weld on this whole this whole gig. So let me go ahead and start putting the wood on here. I've got it all welded out as much as I think I need to have it welded up. I think maybe I'll have to come back later on and see if anything breaks and then. Um, you know, who knows? I, this is the first time building a bed like this. But what I've done to hold it down is they had already welded the back section here, so it's not the frame technically. So I, I welded the back bumper onto the frame so it's fixed down. And then I have these supports here. And these supports are not bolted in. They just are resting here to carry the load. Same up there. However, on the other side, uh, I went ahead and I put one bolt in here and then I welded it in place with a little bit of uh, with a little bit of slop in it so that bolt can never back out of there but it will hold the bed down I don't see this thing flopping up and down too much but that will keep the bed from going side to side um, those welds and then this will keep it from lifting up should that ever happen and the back end, of course, is holding this whole thing down, too. So 
if the truck were to tweak, if it were to have some sort of extreme torsion, it would be held down in effectively three spots and give it a little bit of latitude to, to flex and not test my welds, which I want to avoid. So <laughs> let me get back to put this together and then maybe we'll stain this. It figures that the worst welds that I've had in the entire project are the most obvious welds. <laughs> Whatever. I'm not a welder. I, uh, I had this weld on hook that, that should be nice to add an additional center point in the back here. What I've got to do now is these are wood to sheet metal or wood to metal screws. You can see they're self tapping and they are just long enough. Just long enough to get into where I need, hopefully. So what I'm going to do now is, is I've identified the center point between the two sides and I'm going to snap the chalk line and see how difficult these things are to put in. That will dictate how many I install. Rain delay. Well, we have a tropical storm coming through way down in South Florida, but we're going to get some residual, some of the feeder band kind of stuff. And it's going to happen for the next 24 hours. So that's, I think, far enough for this video. And it just happens to be that I have that extra piece on the ground there. And that, my buddy Dave and I were talking about it, might make a pretty nice tailgate. And the way that when he had initially built the trailer with the pins, I think we can make a, a gate that, that comes over here and latches, that stows all the way around the swings 270 degrees and stows on the outside, which would make it really handy to stay out of the way and not worry about up and down flipping and whatnot. But that would be another video, I think. And the, the only other thing that I'm really leaving out of this would be staining it, but it's I'm shot out for a week now. It'll take a week for this thing to dry out. So that's it. I'm pretty happy with the way things turned out. I wish I had more welding abilities, but I think it you know takes a lot of practice, and this is sort of part of that practice. They do have a side, another box coming. That buyer's box that I bought there will not fit. The spring spring per, uh, mounts are are in the way, and there's no way around that. Not without hacking the box up, and I don't have the skill set to do that. So I ordered the right size. It'll be here a couple days, but maybe I'll do a part two on this. The trailer my buddy gave me, uh, my buddy Dave gave me, and I was able to salvage the the two the eight inch C channel. The only thing that I bought for this was 160 some odd dollars worth of lumber. So oh, it's a it's it's nice being able to salvage some stuff and, and get a get a flatbed. I looked at some other ones online, some pre made, and you're looking you're starting at 3,500 dollars. That's without shipping. That's a lot of money for a truck that costs $1,500, so I've got to put the lights on it and license plate and all that other stuff, but it'll be for another day. Uh, for those of you that made it this far, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, please subscribe to the channel, and I hope you're having a good weekend.